everyone welcome to watch it paint it this video i'm going to be painting a model from dawn of peacemakers this is yana the agami heron i don't own this game so i've borrowed this model from tom over at slicker drips if you've not heard of him it's a channel i quite enjoy watching he is another uk based youtuber who talks about board games he does overviews reviews and sort of playthroughs for games so i'll leave a link in the description below to go and check out his channel so far he's done an overview of this game he's going to have a couple of playthroughs coming up so if you'd like to know more about this game or just see my you know painted models in action on the on the table sort of thing go and check out his his channel uh, anyway you're probably here to watch me paint this so let's get on with that i'll start off with just showing you the model just in case you haven't got this game and you'd like to see uh, so this is just me spinning it and you can have a look but you can also probably notice it's a little bit smaller than normal i'm not quite sure what the scale is i'm not familiar with that you know i don't know enough about board games but it's less than 28 you know it's sort of what i guess 20 something like this is it's definitely a small model to paint I've not painted many things this small so i'm going to attach that to my hobby holder and i'm just going to quickly show you my value brush that's from quick draw supplies that i use all the links are in the description below if you're interested in this and often there's a discount code there's discounts codes for both the brushes and the the hobby holder that i use then i'm going to go on to so the, the reason i'm using that value brush that's quite important is because i'm going to be painting on the primer this is a vallejo this is somber gray and it's the vallejo game color range which can be used as a base coat and a primer simultaneously and because i'm sort of just priming it and smashing that brush into the model basically just getting a nice quick even coatage it's going to damage the brush so i'm going to use a cheap brush there just to save some pennies next i'm going to use army painters light denim and i'm going to be sort of dry brushing that over those head feathers that he's got and just making those a little bit lighter because that's what it looks like in the artwork next is wolf gray it's vallejo so i'm going to use a load of different light blues basically for building up this this herons why is it a heron i i, I when i took this on from tom i i was certain it was a pantless thunder goose and i really wanted to paint that and now it's a heron i'm a little bit disappointed with it um i didn't give it the love it deserved now I ho hopefully i still pull out a decent job i was just shocked it wasn't what i thought it was so i'm using that wolf gray by Vallejo to sort of paint in his the center of his neck and around his face just bringing out some different colored feathers i'm going to use Vallejo's wolf skin this is and it's a sort of very light orange and basically i'm just trying to match these colors to the artwork it's difficult to show you the artwork i, I was i struggled to find it online to be honest i actually had to message tom and have him send me some pictures over facebook so i could see what i was working with on this model and hopefully i've done it some justice it looked quite different in in lots of the artwork that i saw like i guess you've seen him from different angles and i couldn't quite tell what was what but Hopefully this, this comes out looking decent by the end. I'm going to use Elf Skin, which is a lighter version of that Dwarf Skin, I think, by Vallejo. A bit more yellowy base this time. And I don't know what this is called. You know, the, like, thing he's wearing. What do you call them? Like, you see them hanging, don't you, in, like, churches and stuff. This must be some sort of cleric -y character in the game. I'm not playing the game. I don't know anything about the game. Don't have the game. Um, so bit awkward filling the space isn't it when i don't know much to say about it anyway next color hooray uh, cold gray vallejo's lightish gray uh, i could have used filthy suit but i just had this to hand i'm going to be painting around the collar of his cloak and that looks quite white in the artwork so i'm really giving it this cold gray here to be the to be the shade i'm not going to use a wash on that area i'm going to use bone white by vallejo this is just an off white slightly sort of yellow slightly like old paper which is i'm going for and i'm painting his book the well the pages of the book so i did the back of his book and that's the back was that elf uh, skin to match the back of his cloak as well just tying that in i'm also going to paint on his eyes using the bone white which i'm brighten up with white later on hammered copper i'm going to use vallejo's metallic here and this is to paint on all the bits which i think would be gold so he's got some sort of cross thing hanging down from his, his belt and he's got some gold coins sort of hanging around his belt and then the uh what would you call that the clasp on his cloak is also gold and the stars and the trim around this i want to say sigil 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 i don't even think it's that but i'm gonna go with that down the back of his cloak and i'm just giving that that starting with hammered copper again i'm not going to shade that so i'm using that as the darkened version of the 
the metallic that I want, the gold that I want later on. Now I am going to use some wash. When I started off painting this model, I thought I'm not going to use any wash whatsoever, but I, I just wanted the details to pop out easily. And he's a very, very small model. It was a bit fiddly to start painting in all these layers and bringing out the color that way. So I'm using Army Painter's Blue Tone. I'm going to be shading all of the, the, the Heron's skin, feathers, both. So his legs, his wings, his uh, the under parts of his belly and down his back and his his head and just making that I'm making that darker but on his wings it's really really popping that back out that detail and making the model look really good it's actually a very detailed model for how how small it is and it's quite easy using the wash to pop out though those details I'm going to use light wash as my other wash and I'm going to paint all of his cloak especially the inside where I think it would be sort of darker shadowed by you know the sun wouldn't be getting from the sides or or his legs would be blocking it that sort of thing also going to do the same on his butt going to use that light shade and then I'm going to use a little bit of survivor shader primarily I'm just putting this on his eyes and letting it run to the outside to give him a really black circle I'm also going to make sure I paint back in the beak or the the the, the join the gap in his beak and really make that pop out and then after that I've decided I'm going to put blue tone on his hair as well his hair his head feathers it's just not popping out enough I was losing some of the detail so this is watered down probably about 50% I've made it a lot lighter uh, I just wanted it to pop out a little bit more and just look a little bit more interesting and then going to start painting in the eyes and from the artwork they were pretty detailed eyes so I'm going to start with dead black I'm just going to sharpen up the ring around his eyes just make that look a little bit better and paint on his belt then I'm going to build, be building up his eyes so I'm starting painting from the bottom about two thirds of the way up the white giving him some nice black eyes next I'm going to use bloody red and then I'm going to go about two thirds the way up that black so from the bottom sliding up about two thirds leaving some black at the bottom though giving him that nice ring around his eyes and then I also notice he, in some of the art it looks like he's got sort of a red bill a red neck bit so I just painted on a little bit of that I did forget to continue it all the way down his body couldn't see if it was like that in the art so I'm not 100% sure then I'm getting the black out again and now I'm going to paint on top of the red to paint in his uh, I guess his pupils these would be so I guess the red sort of his iris and the black around it was just a ring with detail and then red red's his iris black's his pupil and then I'm dotting in two tiny tiny little bits of white just to give a sort of reflective look to his eyes make them look realistic some of the best eyes I think I've painted and some of my favorite to work on they were really really big they weren't chippy though but they were big and they had enough space to work with my insane detail brush and really just bring on those layers and make those eyes look I think pretty good and it's nice it's nice because when you pick up a model when people are looking at your models they are most likely to look at the face so if you have got a chance to paint on some good eyes it's really really going to give a nice impression it'll make yourself proud and make other people just be a bit like whoa that's impressive sort of thing and it's it's not too difficult I think I was probably using a magnifying glass or my headband magnifying glasses to see definitely but it's one of the biggest bits of the model here I'm just going to be dry brushing some white primer very very carefully I'm using my Rosemary and Co smooshing brush which is just the best dry brush I've got left um, uh, smallest as well and I'm just making that go white and leaving that cold gray in all of the recesses giving the effect of some shadow so we're back to the original color this somber gray and I'm using my insane detail brush and I'm just going around and painting back in that base coat anywhere the wash has settled that I didn't want so that's each individual feather on his arms but he's quite as I said it's a small model I'm using my smallest brush this does not take long it's a couple of minutes just whiz round paint all of that in nice and watered down so it blends well then I'm going to use light denim to do basically the same just go around and highlight all the areas so I'm blending a little bit it's not much paint on the brush and I'm blending the face where I where I joined all of these colors together and I'm just smoothing out the edges so it looks a little bit less of a sharp contrast then I'm going to highlight up his cloak I'm just using that original dwarf skin and I'm using a big brush here my one two I really struggle with the numbers good brush though Rosemary and Co's brush I'm enjoying these I will probably be doing a review quite soon um, just painting in all of the folds and then I'm going to do elf green and paint all of the flat areas of I just wish I knew the word for that someone let me know in the comments below I will add it to my vocabulary if I ever paint a cleric heron thing again also just edge highlighting up his book as I mentioned I did do that in the same color as that flag thing on his back that's hanging down 
uh, just make sure, just be very careful and edge highlight that. That's going to make it look good. And then again, bone white, exactly the same as I just did with the elf green. green elf green. It's not elf green. It's elf skin. Uh, exactly the same as I just did with that on the book. And it's just edge highlighting all of the pages, just making those look a little bit more interesting. Then next, I'm going to skip a little step because I've covered this. I'll leave a link to the video on my channel for this. I'm just going to use some sterling mud and some step grass to finish off the base because the board looks like it was grass based and I thought it'd be nice for Tom, uh, but, you know, go a little bit special for him and do a bit of a fancier base than I normally do. And that's him completely finished. Hopefully you can see and appreciate the eyes. I think they're the, some, as I mentioned, some of the best that did. I'm really happy with those. And I think the base is nice. It didn't really take long. It's a couple of minutes. So you don't, you know, you're not losing much and it's a nice, easy finish to it. And as I mentioned, if you'd like to know more about Dawn of Peacemakers, check out Tom's channel in the links in the description below. Thank you all very much for watching and let me know if you'd like me to hurry up and edit and publish the other model that I borrowed from Tom. Thank you all very much for watching.